Hello, hello, and welcome back to TGTV, and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to not only London, but uh, a video with a difference today. I thought I would come on the record and talk to you guys and girls about a incident I had recently with a Tesla. Most of you watching this by now, the early viewers will know what I'm talking about, uh, but if this gets into the algorithm, then you don't know. I had an incident with a Tesla recently so i'm going to go into that i'm going to explain what happened uh how that was actually responded to not only by tesla but also um the tesla fraternity should we call it and actually an update as to what's actually happened with the car since and what the result is what the resolve is at the end of it so we'll start at the top then i got a tesla model y about 10 days ago i have had a polestar for over a year and a deal came up on the Tesla Model Y. It was a very, very cheap lease deal. It worked out at £420 a month. Well, £400 a month, including that, for a brand new, no options, Model Y in white. Uh, I optioned for a black car, and it came out about £420 a month, including that, put through my business. An absolutely stonking deal for a 50 55 odd thousand pound car i thought you know what i don't really have any interest in having a tesla um, i'm not a, an elon hater i'm not an elon fanboy uh, it's kind of neither here nor there but i thought you know what i'll try it for that price after the tax benefits you're looking at about 80 pounds a week for a brand new tesla on a two-year lease no brainer surely so anyway the car was physical as well uh, i didn't have to wait for it. it was about a week for delivery car turns up and i had um three or four very happy days with it driving around the place and i actually had to go up to nottingham one day from london which i did i fully charged the thing i went up there i charged it at a supercharger um nearly at my destination and then when i headed back later that evening i had about 220 miles of range it was the point at which i was on a dual carriageway uh 70 mile an hour dual carriageway the a46 leicester bypass uh i think it's a 70 mile an hour zone I was on the outside lane and suddenly the car started flashing up saying beep 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 pull over shutting down um, cars losing power and i'll show on the video now what that actually looks like but there's beeping flashing lights just telling me the car's shutting down no time frame given just it's going pull over now luckily there was a truck uh, pullover stop one of these laybys with uh, actually a curb separating the road uh, from the layby with an SOS phone in it. <clears throat> and that was it within sort of 500 meters or so being told to pull over. So I was very lucky. I managed to get over, get into that. At the point at which I pulled over and I was sat there in the car, um, it kept saying this same pull over, pull over, the car shutting down. I probably got about a minute or so of that. I can't, I don't know the exact time frame, but I probably got about a minute or so of that before everything cut. Absolutely everything. I'm talking lights, interior lights, um, and actually uh, window switches and the door so i thought oh fantastic i'm now in a completely dead car and i had about 20 percent battery left in my phone i'd been out all day filming and i thought oh shit. i need to ring the aa or tesla roadside assist i need to ring someone to alert them to the fact that i'm here and that i need to be got basically um i started by ringing tesla roadside assist i had the number in my phone luckily um and i i was on hold it took about 10 minutes to get through and i was ringing and ringing and ringing and i thought my battery because my iphone's old and it's you know it goes from 20 percent down to one percent almost in the blink of an eye i thought i'm going to run out of battery here i'm just going to ring the aa i just need someone to come to me to know that i'm there and then i can charge my phone with them and we can get it sorted from there uh, but i can't i don't know when tesla are going to pick up i haven't phoned them before i don't know if indeed anyone will pick up for you know by the time my battery runs out so i ring the aa because they're usually really really reliable the aa so i rang them so i got the aa on their way but aa were actually super super busy so they had to subcontract it out to another recovery firm who turned up and basically said they couldn't touch it. But car long story short, that took an hour and 45 minutes of me sat in this car in minus three conditions with no heating and a dying phone and no means to charge it. Good. At one point then, after being sat in the car for about half an hour, I thought, do you know what? I need a slash. I'm gonna get out of the car. And because the battery was completely dead, the usual buttons, uh, which are electronic to release the door, they weren't working. 
Luckily, I knew where the manual kind of emergency override switch was to open the door manually. And I advise you all learn, if you've got a car with electric doors uh, and doors that will fail if the electrics go, learn where the manual override is, particularly on McLarens as well. And I'm not saying they're unreliable, but I'm saying that you do need to learn where that is and actually tell your passengers as well. Because God forbid there is an accident, it's really, really good to know where that is. I think McLaren is under the seat. Anyway, on the Tesla, it's underneath the window switches. Um, it's actually very easy to find. Uh, but I opened the door of the car because I needed to get out to go to the toilet because I've been sat there for God knows how long. Open the door and because the window wasn't dropping in the frame as it's supposed to do with the electrics, just a tiny corner of the window caught in the door frame as I open the door. And presumably because it's, you know, minus three outside, the window was a bit brittle. I don't know, maybe it just caught it at a weird angle. The window cracked. It spidered across the whole window. It didn't fall in, glass didn't go everywhere, but it just cracked across the window. I was not very amused. Not very amused at all. Anyway, got back to the car to get back in after I finished doing my business. And it was actually left a gap across the top, which was letting in even more cold air, which again, I wasn't particularly amused by. AA guy turns up eventually um, and basically says, car's dead, can't really do anything. Speak to roadside assist Tesla, um, to which point I did. I managed to charge my phone with him and Tesla said, we're gonna be about an hour or so before we know when we can send someone out to you. Great, but they did log into the car over the air and they said, do not try and jump it, do not try and boost it, don't try and get it into tow mode, leave it alone. Whatever's happened, the car is essentially just cooked, it's bricked. Don't touch it, just leave it alone. Um, because there's been some sort of uh, catastrophic failure, basically, uh, which means everything's cut out. Um, not great. And bear in mind, the car at this point was 216 miles or so of range. Again, I'll show you the screenshot on the screen. Um, I'm backing everything up here because I put this on Twitter and I, I did quite an angry tweet at the time saying, car's packed up, it's cut out whilst I was doing 70 miles an hour, like absolutely unacceptable. Uh, and I called the whole thing a show. And I tagged Elon Musk. And immediately I was greeted by people saying, I'm a paid actor, I'm working for the left wing, I'm trying to bring down Elon, you know, all these mad conspiracy theories and also, all cars break down, what's your problem? Uh, mind blowing really, absolutely mind blowing. What, what my problem is, and what my problem was, is that I dealt with that okay, but I'm, you know, a fairly young, fit bloke, fairly experienced driver, driven all sorts of stuff. Um, I was okay. I was alone in the car. What if I'd been single mum, young children, dogs, elderly, pregnant, ill, you know, vulnerable, in the car, stuck on the side of the road, no phone battery, but what if also, and this isn't inconceivable, I'm not making up wild what ifs, this is very, very conceivable, what if within the next minute or so, there wasn't anywhere to pull in? What if I'd been on a smart motorway? The car is black, the car cut out completely, no lights whatsoever. It was a misty evening. You know, it's not inconceivable that that could have cut out in a 70 mile an hour zone on a smart motorway, nowhere to pull in, or just somewhere with no laybys, which happens, a country road, and then you're sat there in a black car with no lights on and not necessarily knowing how to get out. Some people in a panic will not necessarily um, think properly and logically, you might not even have that much time to get out. It didn't occur to me fully immediately that the button on the door wouldn't even work. Um, again, I'm a bit boring, so I knew where the emergency override thing was, but are you supposed to train your passengers before you get into these cars? Are you supposed to tell everyone before you get in a Tesla? Oh, by the way, guys, if it cuts out of speed and we end up in the death zone on a motorway, uh, this is how you get out without any electricity. There was all sorts of things that could have happened very, very easily as a result of a brand new car catastrophically failing whilst doing high speed. That's why I was annoyed. Uh, and frankly, if I didn't have an issue with that, there'd be something hugely, hugely wrong with me. So I got so much abuse on Twitter, so much abuse, just calling me a liar and just basically saying, you know, what is my issue? And 
I've just explained my issue, which I think is totally, totally fair. I know cars go wrong, I know they break down. Cars have broken down on me before, but I've never had, in years of driving, pretty much everything under the sun, owning and also being uh, lent press cars, I've never had anything like that happen to me. I've never been in such a precarious situation and actually got away with something so bad happening so lightly. Um, so for all those people calling me a paid actor um, to attack Elon and bring down his empire, no, I've never been anyone that's invested in what Elon says, what Elon does. Uh, I couldn't quote two things that he's ever said. I've got no interest um, and not in a negative way. I'm just completely, completely uh, separate to it. I just don't pay attention. Um, so, And also Tesla, I wanted it to be a good car. I have no ax to grind with Tesla whatsoever. I don't care. Um, I've worked with a number of different electric car brands over the years. I don't have an invested interest in trying to crush the share price of Tesla. I, I don't care. I, I literally don't care. Um, so if you're watching this and you're getting hot under the collar about Tesla and Elon and whatnot and, and screaming at me, I would, I would save it. That's not my gig. It's not my job. I was just a customer that nearly got wiped out. Um, so. Eventually then, I said to the AA guy, because he didn't want to he didn't want to drag it onto the truck, he didn't want to uh, try and bump it or start it or put it in tow mode, which he was correct on all of those fronts. Um, I'd called Tesla Roadside Assist. It took a while, a bit of back and forth, probably about half an hour, 35 minutes to actually get them to get someone on their way. Eventually a subcontracted recovery firm, who are fantastic, um, came along. I think they're called Anderson Commercial. Anyway, they turned up, they were brilliant. Um, but I got the AA guy, to take me to the 24 hour services uh, where I sat in Burger King for another two hours or so whilst my Tesla sat on the side of the road. Another complication occurred due to the, uh, the car locking itself and kind of my fault, I let the door close whilst I was out of the car. I left all my stuff inside the car. So I was on the side of the road with a completely locked car and all my belongings inside but it did have a cracked window. So I actually had to end up <laughs> ripping the top of the window down to get back into the car to get my stuff out. So yeah, that, that didn't feel particularly, uh, feel particularly safe. Um, and then I, you know, I got glass in my hand and all sorts of stuff then. Um, that was partially my fault. I let the door close. When I was out of the car, it slammed. Okay, and I should have been more on it thinking, I'm not gonna be able to get back in. But in those sorts of moments, I'm absolutely frozen by this point. I hadn't dressed to go out um, Arctic camping, so I was absolutely freezing. You know, had I been 80 years old, might have got hypothermia quite easily, quite easily. You know, I ended up breaking my window even more to get into the car. Not a great feeling on the side of the road. Must have looked like a right yob. Um, right, so eventually the recovery guys came to get the Tesla. I met them at the services, I gave them my key card, I gave them the what three words as to where the car was, and they went and got it without me. I had no interest in going back to the car, and I actually left the car open with the window broken on the side of the road, because I just thought, I can't stay with this car any longer, it's gonna be another three hours, I'm off to the services. I ended up having to book a hotel room that night at Leicester Forest East Services, welcome break there, uh, 55 quid on a hotel room, lovely stuff. Um, no gripes with that hotel whatsoever. It is what it is. Because I was having to head up to Scotland the next day. So there's no point in me trying to get back to London at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. In, in some sort of arranged transport, which would have taken ages. I just thought I may as well just get my head down and, and try and join my train that I'd booked on the way back up. It was another 60 quid or so to catch my train to go back up to Scotland the next day where I was filming something for a, for a whiskey brand. But they recovered the car. I went down to bed for the night at a lovely hotel. And in that time, Tesla, to their credit, reached out to me, a lovely chap called Marco, reached out to me and said, we're really sorry this is happening. Um, we will pay for your hotel room up to a value of 150 pounds or 150 euros. Um, here's a form to fill in, um, happy days, basically. Um, which I thought, fair dues. That's cool, that was cool. And they were very, very, very nice. They were not rude about it. Um, they were good eggs, they were good eggs. So I'm not I'm not bashing Tesla, it's not the fault of the staff that the car's gone wrong. And you know, cars do go wrong, 
So yeah, they reached out and they said, we'll pay for your hotel room. I haven't actually filed that claim yet, but I will do that and I will try and claim for the additional transport costs I've, I've faced as well, like a cab in the morning, all sorts of stuff. Um, but they've been really helpful. So the car got recovered. That was on a Friday. We're now Tuesday the 13th and I've just had it from um, Tesla Nottingham, the service centre where the car's gone to. I've had Paul there on the phone to me. Again, really nice chat, really helpful. Sorry this happened, we'll sort it out. Uh, we're looking at the car, would you like a loan car? Um, so I've actually got a loan car coming to me today. Uh, and they tried, they tried sorting it on over the weekend. I wasn't really around, so they've been good. They've been really, really good over this whole thing. Everyone that I've spoken to at Tesla has been apologetic, been helpful, um, and, and just a credit to the company, really. So I'm not griping there, not griping there whatsoever. Um, do I think all Teslas, this happens to them? No. Do I think you should not buy a Tesla because of what's happened to me? No. I mean, bear it in mind, um, it's not isolated, it does happen. And the lady on the phone, when I spoke to her, originally it's uh, roadside assist, she says, you know, this can happen. You know, sometimes I think it's to do with uh, the software updating whilst you're driving, something like that. Um, but it does sometimes happen. So no, not a smear campaign on Tesla at all. I've just got so many questions on the thing, I just thought I would run you all through it. Uh, and since then, Paul's actually been in touch about an hour ago before I made this video, and this is why I'm making it now, saying your car has been looked at. It was a PCS failure. He wasn't really a million percent sure what that means. I'm not a million percent sure what that means. Uh, he said it's a relatively simple fix, which is great. He said all we're waiting on now is actually the glass on the window. So I've got to wait for that. But a loan car, a Model 3 Performance, I think, has turned up at uh, my girlfriend's parents' house. So that is very good of them. So they've offered to pay for a hotel. They have sent me a loan car. They've apologized. They've jumped on the issue straight away to fix it. I'm not really sure there's much more they could have done about this to make it any better. Other than building the things properly in the first place. No, look, it, it does go on. And if I didn't raise a grievance, then there would be absolutely something wrong with me. It could have been a lot worse. I'm just thankful it wasn't. I'm not being dramatic about it as well. Some people are saying you're being super dramatic. I'm not being dramatic at all. It's not, it wasn't a particularly dramatic incident for me, if I'm honest. It was pretty, pretty lackluster and pretty, pretty calm, to be fair. Um, it was just annoying. It was just really, really annoying. Uh, it has meant that I've had to drive around in different cars this whole time. Oh, and the lone car actually is a bit of a win from Tesla because it's got free supercharging with it. So I've got free charging on that car for as long as I have it. So I have said to Tesla, I've said just keep mine for as long as you want. Because uh, obviously you don't get free charging with the new cars now. You only get it with the historic, uh, the old Model S's or whatever they were. That some of the older cars have still got free supercharging with them, but uh, the new ones definitely don't. So I was like, yeah, you keep that for as long as you want. I've also got uh, the performance car landing and my Model Y is not a performance car. I'm going back then to why I bought a Model Y. I don't know, no, I'm joking. I actually bought it because my girlfriend's about to pass her test uh, and my manager Mahmood needs to run around. Uh, I probably won't have the Polestar forever. Um, so I thought, why not just jump on this really, really good deal? Because it's a sort of 600 odd quid a month car usually. Uh, for 400 a quid, I just thought, you know what, it's such a good deal. I'm gonna find use for it. I'm in and out of London the whole time. Let's just get it ordered. There's no weight on it. Uh, and just actually just try Tesla, to be honest. Um, so that's why. That is why. Um, and I never even intended on putting this car online. It was actually supposed to be one of my offline cars, because I do have offline cars. Um, and it was supposed to just be part of the uh, anonymous fleet, shall we say. Um, but here we go. It's made itself very known. Um, other than that, I don't really know what to tell you. Other than if you want a really good laugh and see some absolutely bonkers conspiracy theorists and people that are absolutely and totally deluded, please do hit my Twitter and go and find my uh, Tesla tweet and see some rudeness. Um, it's just absolutely mind blowing. I think that's it. I think that's it. Apologies for the rush nature of this. I'm actually off filming in London today, Barclay Square. I'm doing some stuff with Centurion ahead of my 992 GT3 
touring landing. I'm off to go and get something from Centurion. So that video will be out very, very soon. And um, yeah, uh, you'll, you'll see that. I think I'll be filming some of that actually in this car as well. So it might look quite samey. I think then, I think that's everything. I think that's absolutely everything. Yeah, I just kind of want to knock on the head anyone that's got some wild theory as to why I brought up that my car could have killed me. Or, or even people that now think Tom's being nicer than I thought he would be about Tesla. Um, maybe they've paid him off. Maybe they've done something or other, or maybe, you know, he's, he's being nice for a reason. I'm literally just being completely down the line honest about what's happened. I can't slag them off for the way they've actually handled this whole thing. They've been a little bit slow. There's been a bit of like kind of schlepping about and, you know, but they've got a million and one people to deal with. I'm a nobody. Um, I do wonder though, I do do wonder on that note, I am a nobody but I have caused a bit of a fuss online. I do wonder how Tesla would have reacted had it just been um, someone that isn't a social media idiot that's had this happen to them. I'd be interested to know if this has happened to you, how Tesla resolved it and how they treated you because I never know sometimes whether it's just because I'm a social media idiot and people want to shut me up, whether or not I get treated better than kind of your normal decent man in the street. Um, so yeah, I, I would be interested in that. I don't get the impression that it is, um, but the, my strife with the car did get picked up by Business Insider, I think CNBC and Auto, Auto Blog or something. There's been a few websites and I've had journalists reaching out to me quite a lot on it, getting me to talk to them about it all. So yeah, I don't know whether it's Tesla trying to limit the damage. I don't know. Will I be driving that car again? Am I gonna push for a refund and get rid of it? No, I'm gonna get it fixed, I'm gonna try it. You know, if something happens again of that magnitude, I will hit the roof and I will not be as reasonable about it. But until then, I'm gonna give it another chance when the car comes back and we'll see how it all goes. Uh, for now then, I'm gonna leave things here. I'm nearly at my destination. So thank you very much for watching. If you've got this far uh, and I definitely expect World War Three in the comments. So um, have a good time with that. Make sure you subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye.